Thank you all. I'm so appreciative of your time and I'm really happy to share my practice with you. Um, I will start by sharing some of my few works that I made um, January 2020, so they're my most recent works. This is one example of some of the works that I make and it's titled Lagunas Altas. Before I talk to you about my process, the materials that I use and how I put them together, I thought I would share with you how my practice is both indoors and outdoors. Before I go into the studio, there's a whole journey. In this piece in particular, I started in the National Park of Patagonia, Chile. I traversed in, uh, in seven days with a group of women and a guide, starting here, all the way here. So it's a total of 67 miles. And towards my right, there was a Zoom image of a trail called Sendero Lagunas Altas. This was a 16 mile hike and it was such an adventure. Because although when I was coming out of the trail, when I was ending the hike, going down from the summit, there was this beautiful view and I would like to share that with you. To me, I saw this view as a sacred view. There's like this womb-like shape that's kind of like holding the middle ground and the background. And it feels like it's giving life to more green. And then there are all these like different kinds of greens from very saturated greens, dull greens. And it just was a breathtaking view. Um, and that was towards the end. And I emphasize that because in the beginning of the hike, this was what was around. There were very like darker kinds of, you know, grayish clouds, more duller colors around. It definitely rained. It actually rained super hard for hours. Um, and it was a very kind of challenging trail to navigate through, especially when I reached the summit, because I was so used to going up top on the mountain and in a nice sunny day and, and appreciating all its glorious beauty. But here, this hike specifically pushed me to see the beauty past the rain. And when I changed my mindset, I started to see the micro moments of everything around me. And I thought of the flowers kind of like winking at me and saying hi to me and waving at me. And that kind of contrast of the dark, like kind of bark that was wet, I felt this weight and the moss kind of just like moving with the wind. It was breathtaking. And I never experienced a hike through a micro lens. It was also, it was always for me in the past very macro. And that's kind of like my process before I go into the studio and automatically work. I um, listen to my hands because I believe that they can tell me more than me just trying to plan what I'm going to make but I'm very um, decisive in terms of what materials I want to use beforehand. So I use a lot of mixed fibers, um, thread, wool, found objects, natural material, do my best to repurpose many objects as well, um, and kind of see what bodily landscape I connect. Because to me, the, my, the body and the landscape are very much deeply connected. This is another work and it's titled Raices Cíclicas. And I do title my works in Spanish. I was born in Cali, Colombia, South America. And I migrated to New York when I was about eight years old. And I disconnected a lot from the Spanish language because I you know, went to school and just would talk more English. Um, but I've been reading most recently a lot of Sp um, poetry in the Spanish language, specifically of this poet. His name is Gonzalo Arango. Um, and I love South American poetry because um, that's about spirituality and that's about nature. Um, so raíces means roots, cíclicas means cycles. So like roots that kind of like come together. Um, and I do a lot of poetry on my own. I'm not ready to show that yet, but <laughs> um, 
this is kind of like where I am currently are and I'm going to show you a zoom in of this work to kind of get an idea of the various layers that are very like veiled but then they also reveal and there's a lot of motion and a lot of activity and a lot of different use of materials and different perspectives um, and I thought it would be fun to share with you a minute and a half video that silence all motion of how these works come about. So when the thread moves like that, for me, I make like the thread dance almost. And then I give a haircut. Um, so I very much see thread um, through a personal lens like hair. So then this video actually shows the process of this work. So that was the end product. Um, that was just kind of like the beginning stages of the process. Um, and this work, it's titled Ruido Suelto, Noise That's Loose. Um, and a lot of my inspiration comes from the textiles made by women artists that often come I believe come um, miscommunicated and seen as, you know, decorative art, which I think of as like a high form of art, um, not only from the way that it's done, but also from the narratives embedded in them. They're high forms of knowledge and pure wisdom. The work to the right was made by a friend of my grandmother's who unfortunately passed recently. Um, and although I never met her, I knew that she was very special to my grandmother. And my grandma gave it to me because she said, you would appreciate this. And she was very right. Like her detail and color palette was a huge inspiration to the details that I go about when I'm making my works. So to the left is the detail of an image of, you know, how I kind of make and combine all these threads. And I just thought that her work was incredibly, aside from being beautiful, very powerful. Um, and then the last things I want to share with you. So I create different kinds of work. I work abstractly, but I also work representationally. I did not involve my mushroom series, which is a series on its own. And then there are the, these other kinds of um, geometric collages that I make as well that I don't have here, but in my website, you can definitely check them out. But they, these portraits that I make are part of a series called Portratos Genealogicos, genealogical portraits of my family members. So I choose images where I find my family member, specifically here is my grandma um, from my mother's side, Abuelita Clara, who gave me the piece that I showed you of her friend. I find photos where they're the most happiest, where I feel their authentic happiness. Um, and I just re replicate that through my own interpretation through a technique that I called bad sewing because I just sew like crazy. And I don't really um, think of a pattern. I disrupt the pattern and allow my hands to move. After I sometimes use a photo that I print or I just hand draw it, depending on how I feel.
This is my other grandmother, Abuelita Rilinda. She lives in Colombia and they're a very beautiful woman. She raised me until I was eight and then I met Clara when I was eight in New York. She was already here. And she's totally my inspiration as well. She um, is an avid hiker um, and a plant lover. And I learned so much from her about life and strength. She's a very strong, like strong woman. So I just thought this would be fun. I came across, I recently um, moved with my partner to a place because we had to leave and I stumbled upon a old painting of mine that my mom kept um, of me when I made it when I was eight and it was of nature. And I thought, hey, it, it look, I think I've just, you know, invest, been investigating the relationship with nature that I have on a personal, intimate, spiritual level. So I thought I turned the question to you and you don't have to answer it now, maybe something to ponder on, but how might you reveal your relationship with nature? Thank you so much for your time. And um, I'm really happy that I got to share my practice with all of you. Hi, Daniela, this is Anisha Naiwat. Good to see you. Uh, I really, really enjoy your work. I like the layers. Of course, I like the textures, you know, that's the weaver in me. But um, the one that uh, your grandmother's friend, that one that she made, and then also the one of your grandmother, they reminded me of a book. I think the title is An Unlatched Heart or The Heart Unlatched, either one. And I think you might enjoy it. It's, um, it might be kind of hard to find. I think it, it was out of print for a while and then it came back. It's a novel, but it's about the, these women in a neighborhood and how their hearts are just so unlatched and free. And especially that one of your grandmother, it's like you captured her, her flowers, her garden, her adornment of her heart. So thank you, it was very beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Anisha. I'm, I really took notes of what you just said because I love reading um, about anything that someone suggests I would be interested in. <laughs> um, and just the title of that book, Unlatched Heart, it's so poetic. So I'll definitely take a look at it. Thank you. I liked it because it was also very visual. I got lots of visual ideas. Um, and it was very poetic, but it's a novel and it's fun. <laughs> Hi, this is Fran Beeler in New York City. Um, not too far from you, Daniela. What a wonderful presentation. Thank you. I really, really enjoyed seeing your work. Um, I wonder in that video where you were, uh, like you were dancing with the piece, is that like, were you doing that for the video or is that what you do with your work? Is that really how physical you are in it? It was really interesting and compelling to watch. It's almost like performance on top of the, the creating of the art. That is such a great question because this is actually something that I contemplate a lot with myself. And um, just, I've been trying to get more comfortable in my own skin and in my body. Um, specifically when it comes to my art. I've, throughout the years, I've documented photos of me creating my works, but not really doing much with them, but just looking at them. I am very, there, there's a huge laborious process that's a part of my practice. And I'm really active and, and I'm really moving and I've always been into dancing. Um, that's a huge part of my own background and culture, but then also this like desire to learn more about the unknown parts of my culture um, has really pushed me to kind of see textiles, the way textiles actually look in patterns um, as a form of movement and how I can connect that with my body. So. I do feel like maybe in the future, there will be some sort of kind of project that I would like to make that is more performance-based. I think that it is something completely new to me that I'm trying to slowly decipher and figure out. Um, but one of the steps to get there, 
I believe is to continue to learn. So a project that I have right now in the works, I couldn't do it because COVID put it on hold. I was gonna do it this summer. Um, is that I'm going to revisit South America um, throughout La Cordillera de los Andes, um, which is the, um, the Andes corridor. And I wanna investigate residencies and I have two right now that I've contacted and I'm planning to go to. Um, I just wanna learn from the native people's perspective on how they make textiles and what if there were any usage of them in their ritual practices. So how the textiles played a part of their culture um, and kind of learn about that. Um, but thank you so much for asking that, Fran. Dorothy from France. So um, I love that. I love that um, you're gonna go down and spend time. Um, I actually lived in La Paz until I was 13 and I moved back to the US. Um, but, um, you know, the, the Bolivian textiles are just amazing. But I also had a, a short residency and a lecture and stuff in Medellin, Colombia. There's an American, I don't know if you looked at it, Colombo Americano. Um, you might look at it because it's pretty cool up there. Um, I'd love to see you expand um, your uh, scale into more kind of body to landscape, you know? So, um, but I, you know, I'm just throwing it out there cause that's what I like, but I'd love to see the strings in such a mass that, you know, you're kind of, you can put your body into it. Anyway, thank you very much. Gracias mucho.